This morning, I'm talking to Bundeep, who is running Finekia, and you just announced an investment in Kryptonite, a leading Swiss digital asset management firm, yesterday. Can you give us an update on that, Bundeep? Sure. So Kryptonite is a um, company out of Switzerland. It's building a portfolio of products that are offered to institutional investors looking for exposure to digital assets. We've known the, the founder for many years, so it's been a, a kind of coming together of both the business model and the people involved. And we've taken a minority stake because I think it enhances our business uh, value and proposition and it helps expand our footprint for what we want to do in Europe. Finekia provides a regular analysis on digital currency, which we cling tenaciously to. Some of us older individuals trying to understand what's going on there because you're telling us you're seeing notable growth. How about you start there and give us an update? Yeah, so the market for exchange-traded funds and exchange-traded notes that are backed by digital assets grew to about $38 billion, and that's the highest it's been since May 2022. And more, more interestingly, the, the surge in the values has been about 30% greater than the surge in the actual underlying market cap of, of cryptocurrencies. So that indicates that the capital inflows from traditional finance and traditional investors is greater than the underlying price appreciation of those actual tokens. Uh, and that, of course, is indicative of, of a growing acceptance of digital assets amongst institutional investors and increased interest. Otherwise, you wouldn't see this 30% premium to the underlying asset value. A lot of that's coming on the back of what's happening in the US with the BTC spot ETFs that are sort of close to being approved, I'd say. There's a certain imminency around that. And, and it's not just one, but it's a dozen applications for spot BTC ETFs. And there's a recent one put together, put in place by BlackRock for an Ethereum uh, spot ETF as well. So I suspect that flow of institutional interest will only increase once these products are approved. And that's what's leading to uh, more excitement in the sector. Well, you were, talk you were talking earlier uh, on Investor Talk about increasing regulations. How is that progressing for increasing consumer confidence for investing in digital currencies? So in many parts of the world, the regulatory certainty has been increasing. So in Europe, you have something called MICA, the marketing and crypto assets. In the UA, you have VARA, the virtual asset regime. And similarly, you have infrastructures of, of regulation being put in place in Hong Kong, in Japan, etc., the one place that it's been somewhat amiss has been the U.S. and their regulations been a way, in a way through enforcement by the SEC. And that enforcement has led to discerning of whether some things are accepting or not. More often than not, the, the view taken by the SEC has been uh, more restrictive of digital assets, and that's been challenged in the courts. And, and the outcome of some of those legal proceedings have been final certainty and what's what's drawing attention towards this current trend towards bitcoin spot etfs is a ruling in the u.s courts which basically laid to rest some of the arguments about whether or not btc could be approved for a spot etf and and uh, the ruling was no the sec cannot block it they have a limited time to to appeal it so i'd say that Regulatory certainty is one of the things investors look for in terms of being able to deploy capital and not running the risk of um, an unknown outcome down the line because of a change in regulations. Uh, and that's that's a healthy sign if you can get more clarity around that and the U.S. were to follow what's happening in other parts of the world. So say I'm an investor and I'm going, okay, I see these notable surges in digital currency and I'd like to get on board digital currency. Do I go to Finacchia? What What exactly do I do as a starting point? What would you recommend? So, you know, in this space, there's... Um, a lot of requirement for investors to look at transparency, governance, uh, liquidity. And because of certain bad actors, people have just taken an aversion to the whole sector in general, which is not necessarily the way to go about it. It's just because Lehman Brothers phase does mean that the entire banking sector is at fault or needs to collapse. So similarly, within the digital asset space, you want to find participants that are well-regulated, well-governed, transparent, liquid. And that's the category we fall in as a listed company that's listed on the CSE and, and based out of, of Vancouver. Our 
mission is to create underlying value. And, and, and so far as we're looking at what we talked about before, exchange traded notes, we have plans to launch exchange traded notes that are not only deploying the underlying tokens in, um, in, in buckets that allow for appreciation of value based on price movement or even some amount of yield from staking, we're looking at enhancing some of these yield bearing products with DeFi generated yield that's decentralized finance, along with um, staking yields, which have been generally well accepted and recognized as, as a fairly safe way of generating yield. Those asset allocations become much more possible through a listed instrument like an exchange traded fund or exchange traded note. And that's part of what we're doing at Finekia. So if you want to be an investor looking at how do I get access to these products? Well, we're a great conduit for that because we're building a business that'll have exchange traded notes in addition to holding private investments that are all, uh, generally speaking, the portfolio is increasing in value. So based on that strategy yep. and based on the analysis that you put together, how do you plan on leveraging this data for the benefit of Finekia shareholders? So one of the things is the data gives us a lot of insights. There's 168 exchange traded products out there. What are they doing that is uh, different to the market? Uh, and what are they doing that's keeping ahead of the market? Well, the vast majority are just holding tokens. There's nothing new they bring to the table. They just offer you exposure to cryptocurrencies. A small minority, about 10 of them, will offer some kind of yield from staking. Our innovation and differentiation lies in the fact that we can bring better yields from deployment of these coins in, in DeFi protocols, which is increasingly get accepted amongst institutions as a way to go. So for us, the data is, if you want to be different, you want to be better, you want to be more innovative, then our product set should reflect that. And therefore, we are making informed judgments and informed decisions about product development and taking products to market based on the data that we're getting from, from our constant analysis of what's out there in the market. So would you say that based, again, on your analysis, and, and I'm when I read your analysis a, a several times, because I thought it was quite intriguing, would you say that the market is turning for digital currency? I'd say so because you have you have sort of two three things, the confluence of two three things. One, you're sort of at, at arguably at the end of a long uh, bear cycle, right? You've seen this sort of winter in the crypto world now for over a year, so that is coming towards you know some kind of sunset. These things don't last forever. Is it a twelve month or an eighteen month? Is a question, or somewhere in between. Second, we have um, smoke signals of the exchange traded funds being approved. And that's going to lead to a lot of capital inflow because large institutions as well as retail investors looking to buy into that suddenly get signals from the regulators saying, this is a safe class to go after and own. And you don't have to worry about the custody and you can get a tax favorable treatment by buying it through your stock broker's account. Lastly, you have Bitcoin having coming up next year. And that's sort of in April next year. When that happens, typically... Bitcoin, which is, has limited supply, it's a finite, so, uh, scarce, um, restricted supply item of value. And scarcity always creates a premium. In the past, when Bitcoin having takes place, Bitcoin's price has risen. And the expectations are on the back of Bitcoin having again next year. The price will rise. Will it go 2 to 3x where we are now? Who knows? But the predictions are generally that it's going to be north of where the price is today. So the combination of the kind of end period of a crypto winter with um, regulatory approvals on one of the biggest asset classes around this, uh, around Bitcoins, which is the ETFs. And of course, Bitcoin having should lead to, um, I'd say, if I was an analyst, I would I would put a buy rating on, on Bitcoin. Um, I, I look at I look at positive signals in the market for the price going up over the next you know calendar year. Uh, and that's where we want to be. Well, you heard it here on Investor News. Thank you so much for the update, Bundeep, and for everybody interested in finding out more about Finekia and, and accessing your outstanding analysis. I recommend you go to their website. Thank you. Thanks so much, Tracy. Thank you.